In this video we're going to build a logical data model. The steps we'll take are as follows. First, we'll capture our high-level requirements as a conceptual data model. Then we'll populate with the, the entities, the core concepts of the model. For each of those entities, we'll then add in the properties, starting off with the key properties. How do we identify those entities? And then we'll add the non-key properties. Then finally, we'll add some relationships uh, between the entities. So let's go and look at the tool. So this is the RStudio Data Architect. First step, we can create a new project. The options we've got, we can create a new blank project, or we can reverse engineer an existing database, or we can import from an external file. So we're going to create a new model. Over on the left-hand side, we've got the Explorer, which gives us views of the model itself, the data dictionary, the lineage, showing data movements, and macros. So in our model, we can break it down into the logical part of the model and then we can create physical models. So ER Studio allows you to create one logical model and you can break it down into submodels from the main model or any individual submodel which might represent a particular uh, concept or topic or project. Uh, we can then generate many physical models for different physical database products. So we're first of all going to create a new submodel. So we're going to call this training. The next step is to add a title block. We can then add our business data objects. So we're going to create business data objects for employee, skill, department, training course, and agency. So this model represents a data store for an HR system. The next step we can lay out the business data objects on the screen. So this effectively represents our conceptual data model. These are the core concepts uh, in our model. So the next step is to populate these with the, the entities. So we'll start off with an employee. And we can create different subtypes of employees. So we'll have a full-time employee. We'll have a contractor. We can then create other entities for department, agency, training history, training course, skill, and employee skill matrix. And again, we can lay them out nicely on the canvas. Notice throughout we've used business language. So this helps us communicate and confirm our requirements with the business community. Now we can add our entities to our business data objects. So if we select a number of entities within the business data objects, we can right click and add them to the business data object. We can then edit the business data objects. We can even provide a, a description of the business data object. And we can see all the entities that are contained within the business data object. Now, one of the entities here is has got a higher priority than all the others. So, uh, employee is the most important uh, entity in the business data object. So, we'll set that as the anchor object. And we can do the same thing for all of our other entities. We can now start adding properties to our entities. So, we're going to add our primary keys and then the non-key properties. So if we hold shift, we can click above the line here and start typing in the primary key for the object. So we'll create employee number. If we click below the line, we can then create some, some non-key properties. So we'll have employee type and start date. We can then edit the entity directly, either by double clicking or right click edit. So here we can see various properties of the entity itself. And we can apply things like a note to the uh, the entity. Uh, we've also got a business definition for the entity. So here we might want to say, employee must have an employment contract. We can also look at the attributes and start to edit the attributes. So here, employee number. Again, double click or click and then click the edit button. And we can see all the properties of each of the attributes. And the attributes themselves, we can apply notes and definitions, etc. We can also add things like reference values. So for our employee number, we're going to specify the data type. 
Now here is the uh, uh, the ANSI list of, of logical data types that are universal to, to all data assets. Uh, later on when we convert this model to a physical model, uh, data architect will use um, data type mappings for each database product. And from this ANSI logical data type will create the appropriate product related physical data type. We're going to set this to be character data and we'll have a 12 character employee number. Because it's a key, allow nulls is always set to no. And we do the same for our other attribute types. So our employee type will be character. Let's make it one single character. Uh, allow nulls, no, we need to have an employee type. Again, this is where we can employ the reference values. So we might want to say what are the different employee types and, uh, and provide that list. Uh, start date, we can set that to be a date property. Okay. And again, allow nulls, we'll set that to no. And then we can add attributes to all of our other entities. Okay, so we've now created our business data objects. We've populated uh, those with entities, allocated those entities to the business data objects. We've created primary keys for all of our entities, and we've set uh, all of our non-key properties as well. So notice over on the left-hand side, our Explorer has been populating as, as we go along. So those are all our business data objects within employee. We've got all the entities. As I click on the uh, objects in the Explorer, notice that they're highlighted uh, on the diagram, which is useful to find things. Okay, so next job is to populate uh, our model with relationships between the entities. So as you'd expect in data architects, we can create the usual types of relationships. So super sub, identifying, non-identifying, and non-specific. So our first job, we're going to create a super sub relationship between our employee and uh, full-time employee and our contractor. So we can select from the, the, the toolbar, um, the cluster, and we can draw from the employee to the full-time employee. For our contractor, so these two are, are part of um, an exclusive relationship, so an employee can either be full-time or a contractor. We can then draw from the discriminator down to the contractor. We can then edit the super sub cluster and set properties of the super sub uh, relationship. So membership type is exclusive, it's one or the other. And the discriminator we can use as the employee type. So the employee type def defi defines which of the sub entities it is. And then we can reposition our line. Now we can create a relationship from address to employee. So we'll select non identifying mandatory relationship. We'll draw from address to employee. Now we can specify some properties about the relationship. So let's set the, the verb phrases. So an address locates employees and an employee is located at an address. And notice as we type the uh, forward and reverse phrases then we get a nice sentence that uh, puts the uh, two entities into context which is really helpful. We'll create another one from department to employee. Here the phrase is a department contains employees and an employee is part of a department. Now notice as we've been creating these relationships then the foreign key properties have been uh, propagating uh, uh, to our employee entity. Now if we create another relationship and this one will create an optional relationship from department to employee. The tool will pop up and tell us we've got a duplicate relationship here. So again, if we populate uh, the same foreign key, we'll be using the ID attribute as, as the foreign key. So here we're going to specify a role name, which allows us to, to segregate so the two foreign keys. So this one, uh, the relationship is going to be manager. And if we move the lines apart, we can then edit and set the, the verb phrase managed by employee. Employee manages a department. And we can also set a role name for our first relationship. And we'll call this logical role name member. And now our two foreign keys for our department are member and manager.
So the tools really helped us out here. We'll create another one from department to employee. Here the phrase is a department contains employees and an employee is part of a department. Now notice as we've been creating these relationships then the foreign key properties have been uh, propagating uh, uh, to our employee entity. Now if we create another relationship and this one will make a uh, optional relationship um, from uh, optional relationship from an employee to a department. Create an optional relationship from department to employee. The tool will pop up and tell us we've got a duplicate relationship here. So again, if we populate uh, the same um, foreign key, we'll be using the ID attribute as, as the foreign key. So here we're going to specify a role name which allows us to, to segregate so the two foreign keys. So this one, uh, the relationship is going to be manager. And if we move the lines apart, we can then edit and set the, the verb phrase managed by employee, employee manages a department. And we can also set a role name for our, um, our first relationship and we'll call this logical role name member. And now our two foreign keys for our department are member and manager. So the tools really helped us out here. We can now add in some identifying relationships. So full-time employee identifies a training history and training course also identifies a training history. And again notice the primary keys are populated. The last relationship will add in a, a non-specific relationship between training course and skills. So training courses can deliver skills and skills can be delivered by training courses and we'll see that uh, resolved later on. Again we can edit the forward and reverse phrases. So there's our logical model done. So to recap, we started off creating a conceptual data model, pulling out some business data objects. We then populated the entities within those data objects. Uh, we then added properties, both key and non-key, and then we built relationships between them. For more information, go to idera.com forward slash contact sales.